My dad took us to see the 10th anniversary theatrical release of West Side Story. And when Natalie Wood appeared on screen, I was shocked because she looks like my mom. And as she danced around that dress shop singing, I feel pretty, I thought she was the most, well, second most beautiful woman I had probably ever seen in my life because my mom was like, inched her out a little bit. And I thought, this is really cool. And I, for somehow, ever since that day, that movie held a little special place in my heart. So imagine my excitement when they say we're remaking West Side Story with Steven Spielberg directing, filming in New York, and we're looking for extras. I'm like, yes. So I'm in the kitchen, and I tell my son, oh my god, I just updated my photo to central casting because I want to be cast as an extra in the historic remake. And as I'm drinking my coffee, he turns and says, mom, if they see your photo, how will they know if you're supposed to be a shark or a jet? And I laughed and continued drinking my coffee. And when I went to put the coffee mug in the sink and I was cleaning out the pot, it occurred to me that that is a question that has been asked of me my entire life. That whenever anyone learns I'm Puerto Rican, the first response is usually, oh, you don't look Puerto Rican. And my reaction is, what does Puerto Rican look like? Um, and as I stood there at the sink, washing my cafe Bustelo coffee grounds down the drain and scrubbing with a little bit of that El Ajax, as my mother calls it, those two combined smells just took me right back to my grandmother's house and where I grew up in Queens, my family lived on the street that separated the white neighborhood from the black and Hispanic neighborhood. But we lived on the white side of the street. And we would go on Saturdays to my grandmother's house, which was teeming with, I have 35 first cousins. My mom is one of 10 kids. And, and on Saturdays, sometimes, we would be there, and the girls with their long, flowing, very curly hair. Um, we get our hair washed in the sink um, by, usually by whoever your mom is, and then probably maybe another auntie was there, because I had a lot of aunties, Titi. And I kept thinking about this day. I got this day returned to me in memory because of the smell of the coffee and the Ajax in the sink, of having my hair washed by my mom, and my Titi Edith, who's my mother's oldest sister. Now, my mom has this kind of quiet beauty, like Natalie would. And she has that really smooth, dark hair. My Titi Edith, now is the 70s, looked more like Rita Hayworth, like red hair, but out of a bottle, red hair, and wearing leopard print. It didn't matter if it was the fanciest clothes she had or the most casual clothes she had. It was leopard print, and there was always aqua blue eyeshadow. And she smelled like a combination of like Avon Skin So Soft and Chanel Number no. 5. And I thought she was the most, I just thought she was the coolest, just the most hip-looking, beautiful, loud, fantastic, vibrant woman I had ever seen in my life. So I'm getting my hair washed by my mom, and they're combing my, as they finish washing my hair, my mom begins to comb my hair out. And you can see my hair is very curly. And as they're washing my hair, I'm getting like every other word they're saying, because the water is running over my ears. And they're speaking in Spanish to each other. And I only understand about half of what they're saying. And the water takes it down to about a third. But the word that keeps coming up is rubia, rubia, which means blonde. Because of my 35 first cousins, I'm the only one that's blonde. 
And they're talking about my hair as being linda and pretty. But my mom, when she begins to comb it, starts at the top and brings the comb straight down because she's trying to make it straight. Because no matter how blonde it is, the curl is undesirable. And I'm sitting there sort of gripping the sink afterwards and every yank of the comb sort of pulls my head back a little bit. And then they begin to wrap my hair. And I don't know if you've ever seen girls who look like this, where you begin to pull the hair in a really tight circle around your head and set a big, one of those big, big black bobby pins about every half an inch around. And you wrap it and wrap it with this bobby pin in around your hair and then get a, like a little polyester chiffon scarf over it to sort of cover it and then you go and you wait for your hair to dry because the point is after all of this pain you'll be able to pull those bobby pins out and make it straight and as they're doing this to my hair my aunt who is the most glamorous woman in the world takes my face and she looks at me and she says you're so pretty que linda que rubia Mm, and my mother says, mm, yeah, but the curls. And she says, mm, y eso también. And she touches the end of my nose. And she says, we can fix it, a little pinche. And she pinches the end of my nose and reaches to this little cloth bag my grandmother had over the sink and takes out a clothespin and sets it on the end of my nose. And it really hurt. But she holds my face and she says, don't worry about it it will make you look like Grace Kelly. And in that moment, I had this contrast of emotions. I felt really special because I was the only one who was blonde. And my mother was always impeccably groomed. If anything, in this family, beauty for women was the highest thing you could achieve. And the fact that my auntie, my most glamorous auntie could hold my face and say, you will be beautiful like Grace Kelly. I was really proud. But at the same time, I was thinking in this rainbow of my family where I am the lightest in our spectrum of shade and looking at my aunties who, who are practicing blancamiento, that you're marrying lighter after moving to the mainland. The pain that's involved in that process as a child. Am I a shark or am I a jet? As I stood at that sink, and watched my Cafe Bustelo swirling down the drain. I was really angry at my mother because for me with my 50% Spanish, I was, why, why couldn't she just love me for me? Why did I have to try and be this quietly ornamental something else? Why? Why didn't she just teach me Spanish? How many years did I have to face? Really? You're Puerto Rican? You don't look Puerto Rican. And from the Puerto Rican people, you're Puerto Rican? ¿Y por qué no hablas español? Because my mother didn't teach me Spanish. And as I stood there, I kind of realized, like Natalie Wood in West Side Story, my mother moved to the mainland in 1950. There is a reason why she and her sisters chose Asimilao. Why my cousins of the second half of those 10 kids didn't learn Spanish at home. And there is a reason why they wanted our hair straight. And the reason is they didn't want us to face the same kind of discrimination that they were facing every day. So there I stood thinking about my son, to whom I did not speak, teach Spanish, and he looks at me 
His big blue eyes. And his very, very curly hair that we are finding it is impossible for him to get a decent haircut in Texas. I'm just saying. And I wonder, is he equipped to answer that question? Is he a shark or a jet? Or is he suspended like me somewhere in between the heaven and earth? Am I flying above 30,000 feet like a jet? Or am I swimming in the ocean like a shark? I think for me, I find myself walking the tightrope and suspended there somewhere in the middle, always looking for the balance. But my nose never straightened, and I will never be Grace Kelly.